Hello, and welcome to Core Confidential, the insider guide to Drupal Core. I'm Preston So, Editor-in-Chief at Tag One, and it's a real big pleasure today to welcome all of you to the second episode of Core Confidential, our monthly series on what's happening in Drupal Core, and exactly what you need to know about Drupal today. Today, we're going to be talking with Drupal Core Committer Fabian Franz, VP of Software Engineering at Tag One, and we're also joined by Michael Myers, Managing Director at Tag One, about what's going on this month in Drupal Core. Today is a very special edition of uh, our show today because we are going to be talking about today's release of Drupal 9. But I think it's important to note that Drupal 9 isn't the only release happening today. I mean, there's actually four core releases happening today, including Drupal 7.71, part of the Drupal 7 family, with full PHP 7.4 support. It's an exciting day. And, and you know, just to get the full kind of picture of What's going on outside of Drupal 9's release? We turn now to Fabian, who's going to talk a little bit about Drupal 7's latest release. Yeah. So uh, Drupal 7, we are still in maintenance mode, but it's still supported together with the community. Thank you, community. You did a great job as usual. We managed to get full PHP 7.4 support in, which is a pretty big deal. That means all of those Drupal 7 sites, as soon as Contrib is ready, obviously, can eventually upgrade to a uh, uh, PHP 7.4 as well. We also fixed that nitty gritty bad Chromium bug. <laughs> so even though Chrome will be putting out release later also to fix it, but if you have trouble with file uploads not working, it's a good idea to upgrade to 7.7.1 because we fixed that here for you and that's cool. But now let's go to Drupal 9. I'm incredibly excited. <laughs> Sure. And one of the things I think we want to emphasize is that, you know, of course, there's all sorts of wonderful excitement about Drupal 9, but that doesn't mean that you have to absolutely migrate to Drupal 9 or, or upgrade to Drupal 9. Uh, Drupal 7, obviously, as you mentioned, Fabian, has a lot of great kind of maintenance releases that are all going to be continuing the legacy of what Drupal 7 has offered until now. But let's go ahead and turn to Drupal 9, because I think that's where a lot of the momentum is right now in the community. The big news, of course, is that we're seeing today not only the release of Drupal 9 and Drupal 7.71, but also 8.9 as well, the kind of next release in Drupal 8. So, you know, I want to congratulate the Drupal community and the entire Drupal ecosystem for accomplishing this major achievement in the history of Drupal. And obviously, it's been a long time coming. It's been four and a half years since uh, Drupal 8 was released. It's been 54 months to develop and release Drupal 9. What does the Drupal 9 release exactly mean? I mean, you know, I know that there's about 2,000 contributed modules ready to go, but um, I'm kind of curious, you know, in terms of the larger picture of Drupal today, what implications does the Drupal 9 release provide and what does it actually mean for our community? So for, for technical reasons, it means we are throwing away all the baggage. Let's assume we are like in, like in a balloon and we're throwing away all the baggage so we can go way higher again. This is kind of like the mental picture you have to, you need to have of Drupal 9. All the baggage is away and we'll have the newest and shiniest symphony trick, all of those things come with performance, stability improvements, bug fixes, new features. We are getting all of those now in, in Drupal 9 because for backwards compatibility reasons, we don't want you to break your site like, like every six months. <laughs> that would be bad. We, within Drupal 8, uh, we just could not upgrade Symfony or Trick or whatever like that. And so uh, basically this is like all the old baggage is gone, all the new things coming in. So this is kind of the, the, the freedom it gives us. And I heard you mention Fabian a little bit about kind of Symfony and, and you know, the fact that the Drupal 9 release is leveraging the, the latest and greatest in the Symfony ecosystem. But, you know, what I think is interesting is a lot of the other things that are, that are, that are being introduced as well. You know, not just the amazing kind of, of upgrades to the code and the ways in which the code evolved, but also the fact that we actually have a new uh, front end theme as well named Olivero. In, in, in memory of a Drupal community member who was a, a very big proponent of accessible Drupal sites and, and all of that, very, very happy to see this theme coming in. And so there's, there's a lot of richness coming into this release. But I'm kind of curious, you know, for, for those of us who have, who, have, who have a sense of the fact that we now have Olivero, we have, you know, a lot of great new libraries that are up to their latest versions, 
where does Drupal 9 go from here? What's next? You know, I know that all the deprecations were removed, but, you know, I guess that's just, that, you know, it's not just about code management or code uh, upkeep and release upkeep. What's kind of the, the, the next step for Drupal 9 from here? The next step for Drupal 9 is to be Drupal 8. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> Drupal 9 is now entering like of this, this phase where Drupal 8 was in the whole time. That means we will be again adding new uh, API layers. We'll be again adding new things that will then be deprecated. And you cannot talk about Drupal 9 without talking about Drupal 10, basically, because there's already Symfony 5 old, but Drupal 9 is still on Symfony 4 LTS because we need the long time support for security releases. But Drupal 10 will then have the newer Symfony, the Symfony 5 or 6 or whatever, the next LTS version basically. And so that's kind of kind of the thing. You are always within the new model, you are basically thinking in three branches at once always. Which is a little bit confusing at all uh, at first, but but let me explain that real quick again because it's it's really important to crock it basically. The Drupal 8 there's no more core development officially today. There's only bug fixes, no more features, and security uh, until the end of life in 2021, basically. And then, basically, it's, it's important that there will be a new Drupal 9 release then in December already. So Drupal core development never stops. It's like Ubuntu. Like, there's a six-month schedule, and there's coming a new Drupal 9.1. And that already will have new APIs, new things, new new features, etc. And so now again, the focus after this long time of getting Drupal 9 ready will be again on user friendliness, accessibility, performance, security, privacy, devices and channels, all of those nice things. So momentum starts basically again in that. And that's very, very excited. That's really exciting to me because, you know, I think a lot of us in the community have been waiting for, uh, you know, kind of the next kind of, you know, threshold for innovation where that's going to happen. And, and it's very clear that Drupal 9.1 is that prime opportunity for folks to get involved. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, first I want to mention, of course, that, you know, if it wasn't clear, the last version of Drupal 8, Drupal 8.9, uh, was also released today. And uh, as, as Fabian mentioned, of course, these are, these are bug fixes primarily about making sure that Drupal 8 remains the stable platform it continues to be. But I'm kind of curious to take a little bit of, an in, of a different perspective here. You know, I think we've talked a lot about the roadmap for Drupal 9, what Drupal 9 means for the community. But I want to get a little bit of an inside perspective. This is core confidential after all. And Fabian, what are some of the biggest obstacles that the core developer uh, and core contributor team faced when it came to, you know, what sorts of, what features or what aspects of Drupal 9 took the most wrangling or, or effort or thought or, 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 or to use Angie Byron's face, cat herding? <laughs> Basically, um, just a quick disclaimer, I'm getting those sometimes firsthand when I'm active in the core community, obviously, but I'm also getting them a little bit secondhand from my colleague, Nick, Ned Gatchpole, who unfortunately couldn't make this date. But so basically, with Drupal 8, we introduced a change, a change in philosophy, a change in development, all this uh, deprecations, all this backward compatibility, and some of those, especially around data, we got wrong, <laughs> basically. So a lot of release blockers for Drupal 9 were actually that the deprecation was not easy to really deprecate for Drupal 9 and to really remove. And so this is all changing in Drupal 10. There's a whole new infrastructure, including PHP unit, Drupal CI, etc., that was built now, and that will make Drupal 9 development much more pleasant for the community and the core developers because this whole deprecation infrastructure is there. I mean, it's been 4.5 years, so there's a lot of experience now also with how does it work if I add a new API and deprecate another one? What do I need to think about? And uh, we have this experience now, and that's great because that means uh, hopefully from Drupal 9 to 10, there will be less release blockers and it will just be a smoother process overall. That's amazing. And, and, you know, I think that's, uh, that really illustrates one of the challenges that was involved in, 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 in kind of that articulation of what Drupal 9 and Drupal 10 are going to look like. 
I'm curious, looking back at, you know, this deprecation infrastructure and the way that the transition from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 happened, is there anything that, 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 that you and Matt and, you know, the rest of the core team would have maybe changed a little bit about this approach? Here I can, can even give my own perspective because I wish we had used this deprecation approach already there. Catch expressed that he would have liked Drupal 8 branch to just be opened way later like stabilize, basically make the preparations within Drupal 7 and not like throw everything away and rewrite everything in Drupal 8. I've did an abandoned approach some years ago to basically port some of Drupal 8 back to Drupal 7 and it went amazingly smooth. I can tell from that experience that the backwards compatibility way uh, would have originally worked if we had started early enough. Because in the end, I always like to joke that they haven't even changed so much from Drupal 7 to 8. We even have the same bugs still. So a lot of things, one of the things, for example, Drupal said message. You could have just introduced a messenger server in Drupal 7. It would have been possible, maybe not with PSO 4 or whatever like that. But you could have just introduced it. And then people could have started using it. And then when Drupal 8 would have uh, came out, at the end, then it would have been already there and people had been already a little bit more used to the optional object-oriented approach and both starting eight later and preparing more things in Drupal 7 for that would have eased this transition a lot. I mean, hopefully, uh, fortunately now with Drupal 9 to 10, we'll have all that, so it's all good, but in retrospect, it would have been nice to have done that. <laughs> And we know that this kind of issue of, you know, obviously backwards compatibility and, you know, opening these, these, these new branches is, is a very, very uh, tough issue because, you know, it sends a lot of signals to the larger community and ecosystem. And so, so I'm curious, you know, based on the things that you've learned from working with Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, what do you think we as a community need to do to make sure to kind of continue that legacy that you just described for Drupal 9 and Drupal 10? Uh, the biggest challenge we have right now, I think the process overall works pretty well, but there's this pesky thing called data. Doesn't anyone just like to reinstall their sites again and again? No, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, we have to preserve all the data. So whenever we do changes, for example, in the entity subsystem that are changing schemas, and those schemas need to be applied, then we always need to write these upgrade paths. And this is still not smooth, kind of like, how do you deprecate an old data structure, introduce a new data structure, and ensure doing all of that, that you are not like doubling the database size, <laughs> or have conflicts because some old modules using the old data, some other modules using the new data. Eh, it's tricky. And, you know, just to kind of take a little bit of an even further perspective, one of the things that I'm kind of curious to hear about is, you know, I think we've heard a lot about the fact that, you know, obviously Drupal 9 represents a huge change in the way that uh, Drupal releases work and the way in which we innovate in Drupal. What's your biggest concern? What worries you? What keeps you up at night, Fabian? Uh, I imagine lots of things keep you up at night, but what, what keeps you up at night in terms of the next six to 12 months in the Drupal roadmap? And what sorts of things are, are, are kind of on your mind and stuff that you're thinking about in the coming year? It, it's probably not giving me as much up as the core committers, but basically the thing is kill all the jQuery. And so basically we need to, there's lots of legacy JavaScript in it. And even the most diehard fans of jQuery have moved to something like Vue, Svelte, even P-React, P-React is great. We've talked about that already a little bit, can talk a little bit more about it. But basically, jQuery has served us really, really well, but the modern frontend has evolved a little bit. And it would be great to uh, at least get jQuery UI out of that thing as a first step. And then later, some other parts out. And also, we are still on CK until 4. We need a new modern editor, be it Gutenberg, CK until 5. Postmora, whatever. I mean, we talked about it. If anyone wants to watch our team talk about it, uh, great overview. And so Symphony 5 is out like that. We are a stable platform, but that also means at some parts we can be behind. It can be compared to like like Debian versus Ubuntu at Debian. You now it's rock solid, etc. And Ubuntu, you were more getting the the newest things. So so once we have the Drupal 10 uh, branch, basically. 
then we can, uh, can also try that out. But obviously, this is all work for the community. We need to find a new editor. We can replace the K-Talk Walrus. We have to see what changes does Symphony 5 bring, etc. So those are kind of the challenges. How do we keep up with the larger ecosystem that Drupal is a part of? And yeah, and, and I mean, we've just seen with the Drupal 7 Chromium bug that have, being on an ancient version of jQuery form, can lead to really interesting strange bugs because there's some optimization for Microsoft Internet Explorer 6 that may be a Chrome, drain, a Chrome 83 doesn't like as much. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's all clashing. So there's a cost to that as well. And that's of course one of the challenges of Drupal is that you know obviously you have to keep abreast of not only the most ossified or fossilized browsers that are out there, but also the ones that are really pushing the envelope and maybe introducing syntax that doesn't work in both. And, and it's you know you know I think it's really incredible. I think you know Drupal has always had a had a, had a really great focus on enabling as many of those browsers and as many of those uh, vendors as possible, which is which is uh, great. So uh, a, a quick note here that I want to make sure that I pass on to the audience. Please remember that because Drupal 9 is out, it's past time to be upgrading your modules. If you have any modules that the community is using, please make sure to have those available for Drupal 9. As Gabor Hoichi, my former colleague at Acquia mentioned previously, most of these modules that are out there in the contributed ecosystem only need a change to their .info.yaml file uh, to register that it's available for Drupal 9 as well. There's no other really, you know, rewriting of PHP or, or you know, using some of these new features that are available in Symfony quite yet. By the way, Gabor is also offering a uh, monetary contribution for every module upgrade. And I'm not sure if that's still going on, but please check out uh, his Twitter account for more information. There's also, by the way, a bot that was created in the community that is able to do a lot of the readiness checking for you out of the box and uh, is a very exciting development as well. Fabian, I just want to check with you. You know, uh, I know that you're uh, somebody who has maintained a lot of modules. What have you done to upgrade your modules to Drupal 9? Have you uh, looked at some of these tools that are available for some of the automation of these upgrading tasks? Definitely. I mean, in, in general, the main thing you need to do to, to check your modules already are basically you need to know which deprecations have occurred or Maybe if you have a test suite for your module, then you just install your module on Drupal 9 and you just run your test suite. And if it passes, hey, you're ready for Drupal 9. <laughs> so yeah, yay for testing is, is what I'm saying here basically. But on the other hand, if, if things are like, if you run into errors or exceptions during testing or manual testing, then obviously you need to, to check those changed blogs and notices and see kind of like what you need to do to adhere to the new APIs. But overall, I think it's, it's a, unless you're using, I mean, some more common APIs have changed, but I think overall it's a pretty smooth upgrade process is also. Wonderful. <clears throat> well, one of the things I do want to make sure also to mention and uh, highlight here in this uh, second episode of Core Confidential is we do have some security advisories about Drupal Core out right now. There's two moderately critical advisories that you should be aware of and make sure to address. Fabian, do you want to talk about these two that are happening right now? I know that there's an open redirect uh, vulnerability as well as an XSS cross-site scripting vulnerability as well. Do you have any insight into, into these two? I have, but I would need to do things that we want to I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> understandable, understandable. Well, no, no, basically, just to give, I think I take the opportunity basically to talk about what is an open redirect. An open redirect basically means someone can trick you into clicking on a link that looks safe because it starts with Drupal.org or mysafesite.com or whatever. And it has an appended parameter and then it's forwards you to a phishing site. So basically it's, it's, it's a two-step phishing approach. The approach is basically you give, send someone an email, you give them a, a specially crafted link, they click on that link, they land on the normal site, like they, they check the link, they copy it into the browser, they see everything is okay, but they don't see that the destination parameter is containing something fishy. And then they click on it and then they automatically get forwarded due to this destination parameter 
and then it basically says, for example, like, hey, your login failed, try again, whatever. And then the user puts in their credentials and then they have basically hacked themselves. A cross-site scripting uh, thing, this case was in jQuery, so they've informed us upstream about it, basically. It means that some parameter that is output is not checked enough. The easiest way to, if you ever want to do security audits for your site, just take every text field on the site and put script alert xxs slash script in. And uh, if you then click through the site and there's an alert checkbox, then you know you're vulnerable. So yeah, <laughs> there's probably the most simple way to test. It's also amazingly effective. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that should illustrate for our listeners and for our viewers today that it is extremely important to make sure and address these moderately critical. You know, I don't like the word moderately. You know, I think every critical vulnerability is critical. Clearly, we want to make sure that our uh, sites remain secure and uh, safe. So thank you so much for that, Fabian. And I think we've learned a lot about Drupal 9 today and of course the coming roadmap, as well as how Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 users should really start to prepare for this um, coming era of new innovation in Drupal. Thanks for joining us on this second episode of Core Confidential. All the links that we mentioned today are gonna to be posted online with this video. And if you liked this episode of Core Confidential, uh, please remember to upvote, subscribe, and share it out. And check out our past uh, Core Confidential talks at tag1.com slash core. We also have a sibling series about twice the length of these Core Confidential episodes called Tag One Team Talks. That's available at tag1.com slash tag team talks. And as always, we would love to hear your feedback and any topic suggestions, either about Tag One Team Talks, our 50 minute series, or about Core Confidential, our 25 minute series. Please write to us for both of those shows at tag team talks at tag1consulting.com. I want to thank our wonderful colleagues today, Michael Myers, Managing Director at Tag1, as well as Fabian Franz, VP of Software Engineering at Tag1. Thanks for joining us on Core Confidential, and see you next time.